Hi, this is Rich Gerard. As you know, our mission here at Gerard at Large is to connect local people, places, and things by bringing you news from our own backyard. Did you know that GoffstownToday.com has a similar mission? So when we want to know what's happening in Goffstown, Ware, Dunbarton, or New Boston, we go to GoffstownToday.com. Hi, this is Bill Wynn, publisher of GoffstownToday.com. If it's happening in Goffstown, Ware, Dunbarton, or New Boston, even in Penardville, you can find out about it on GoffstownToday.com. If we know about it, you should too. Thanks for tuning in. Here's Richard. Good morning, Manchester. And to those of you in the surrounding towns, welcome to Hour 2 of Live, Local, and Completely Out of Control Radio. I am your live, local, and completely out of control host, Rich Gerard. Thanks for tuning in. It's six minutes after the hour. You can find us on the web at GerardAtLarge.com, and you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Also at Gerard at Large, like us, follow us. We wish to strike fear in the hearts of those who would oppose us. And who are they? Oh, I don't know. Just people like Superintendent Stacy Buckley in Goffstown who doesn't think the right to know law applies to her or her school board. Still chasing her for information on that stuff. And that is actually kind of a relevant comment as we are joined this morning by three folks from the Dunbarton Parent Group. Among them, Clem Madden, Dan Ryan, and Steve Alexicus. They are all Dunbarton residents, all concerned about the relationship the town has with Goffstown when it comes to schools, and all advocates for moving from Goffstown to Bow. Note to the folks in Hooksit, it's not really Manchester. It's kind of the nature of the relationship, I think, in general. But, uh, gentlemen, welcome to Dry at Large. Thanks for having Thank us. You. And if you have calls or questions for any of these fine folks, you can give us a call at 672-0573. That's 672-0573. All right. We have the Dunbarton Parent Group advocating that the town vote to accept the so-called area agreement with Bo to tuition your kids to Bo Middle and High School and leave Goffstown. Which one of you wants to say why first? Well, I think uh, – This would be Dan Ryan. <laughs> I think when you look at the – uh, total package of education and cost that that's kind of what we want to get out there to everybody that bow is the is a proven education and it has a lower cost for our taxpayers right now and that's really what the message that we want to get out there today now is there anything that you find deficient about the education your kids are receiving from Goffstown? <coughs> clem I'd, uh, we ought to make clear, Rich, that we're not really here to malign the Goffstown people, the Goffstown town, or the Goffstown schools. We just feel that there's a better fit for us in Bo. I mean, our kids have historically gotten very good educations at Goffstown, and the Goffstown High School is now a very good school, ranked very well throughout the state. But in looking at the entirety of what I've seen in the last year and a half, it's become apparent that, um, for me personally, Bo's a better fit. And we would rather discuss how great Bo is for us and where we want to go as opposed to how many problems there could be. Because you and I know there's some things that are out there, but it's not really pertinent to, you know, what, why most people make their decision. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's, not as, that's, not, that's not as much fun on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> it may not be as much fun on the radio. but <laughs> Well, obviously, if you feel that Bo is a better fit, then – you have to have some reason why, whether it is something that Bo offers that Goffstown does not, uh, whether it's the nature of the relationship between, um, you know, Goffstown and Bo, where there's been a lot of stress, especially lately with some statements made by Goffstown Chairman uh, Phil Pankost. Why do you think that Bo is a better fit? Well, Steve, you know, I, my wife and I sort of view this through a different lens, uh, although we appreciate the clear financial, short and long term financial benefits of the Bow Area Agreement. Uh, we sort of stepped back and viewed the whole process from this point of view. We asked ourselves, you know, why did we move to Dunbarton in the first place? And the ultimate answer to that um, turned out that we, we, we valued the small town experience, both, you know, lifestyle wise and education wise. And Dunbarton Elementary School thus far has, has um, served our children well. Um, you know, the small, intimate nature allows for, you know, parental interaction to exact real change in real time almost, which 
I think you lose at the larger school districts. And going forward, looking at our choices, it's clear you know, to me and a lot of people that Bo enables us to continue that tradition of small town educational qualities into the future. And at the same time, uh, you know, save money, really, um, which are two great things. And I think there's so, so few advantages we can give our kids in this world. And by no means am I suggesting that we shelter them because uh, I don't even think that's possible in this day and age anymore. But um, but to have them be able to um, benefit from the small town experience educationally is uh, invaluable to me. And that's why we're voting for Bo. OK, so you want continuity of the suburban experience in education or small town experience in education. Correct. Um, you, you both, you all, I think, have said something about it being financially better for the town. How, how is that? Um, well, there's a there's a, a stipulation in these two agreements that uh, allow for um, – When you say these two agreements, you're referring to – To the proposed Goffstown one and the proposed Bow one. There's two things in there that are distinctly different, and they're the rental charge, which is what we have in Goffstown, which is the proposed agreement is 2% of the property value of, of the building and sites divided by the number of students, and then you have a per-student cost that you pay on your – in addition to your tuition, which is – calculated through all now, the different... Now, what is the purpose of that rental charge? The purpose of that rental charge is to help the receiving district uh, recoup costs if, you know, used in upkeeping the building or making capital improvements. Yes. You know, they have to bond things that, uh, you know, they do improvements to. And so instead of us paying on their bond, we pay a rental charge. Okay. In short, we rent. We don't own. We don't have any ownership in those buildings. On the flip side, there's a, in the BOA agreement, there's a capital improvement fee, which is a fairly ingenious and unique way to address this problem and it's just a set price that we have that's two two hundred fifty dollars per student per year and that's it it'll only now fluctuate is, by the consumer price index is is Bo obligated to use that 250 dollars for maintenance and capital improvements there or can are, they use it for whatever they want no there are restrictions it goes into a special account that it, that is a, a trust account that they have to form in order to have it go in there, they have to deposit that money in there every year. If they don't do such, it comes back to Dunbarton, whereas on the other side, that, that rental charge is just gone. Once we pay it, it's gone forever. But that money will accrue in that account and can only be used for specific projects of a $600,000 minimum with a usable life span of 15 years. And so what that means is that it has to meet those requirements. We have a, you know, a slight control over the money in that that's how it has to be used, but basically that money is in Bo's control. If at the end of the agreement we don't renew with them and that money is still there, it comes back to us, which is a fairly significant thing. Where on the flip side with the rental charge, you pay it and it's gone. It's you know that is money in the pocket of the Costown district that uh, we have nothing to do with after we pay it. Now, is this a long-term agreement that you're seeking with the town of Bow? And if so, uh, well, what what's the term of the agreement? How often does it They're, renew? Both both are proposed at ten years. Both are 10-year agreements. Yeah. So what, you know, which is good, you know, Dunbarton is, has got a tremendous opportunity in front of it in that we actually were able to set this up to receive competing bids, you know, for our students. We asked two towns, you know, we looked at a lot of towns. Our school board has done a ton of work on doing this and getting this together. But basically what it worked out was is that the Goffstown agreement came up. We had an opportunity to explore it with Bo. The town voted to set up that committee to, in order to do that. And now we have to vote on two plans at the same time. So we had two towns basically looking at us and saying, well, this is what we can do. And Bo was very cooperative. And Goffstown was not as much. But it's a great opportunity. I think we're in a win-win. Goffstown's got good schools. Bo's got good schools. All things considered, if you want to decide about something, you could look at the agreements and realize that the Bo Agreement puts Dunbarton in a much stronger position now and going forward. You know, it's just a better agreement. Gerard at large time is 7.15. We're in studio with um, Dan, Ryan, Clem, Madden. And Steve Alexicus, they are representatives of the Dunbarton Parent Group, a group advocating for leaving Goffstown and going to Bo. Uh, with their school kids. So, Dan, you seem to be one of the vocal members of this group. I have been following the Facebook page, and you've had a, a lot to say about a lot of things. What really was a the, the impetus for you um, to to basically plant your flag and carry on this uh, carry on this discussion the way you have? Well, I think one of the things to remember too is is that because these are ten year agreements, 
the Goffstown one's ending. So yeah. it was the opportunity that came there. It wasn't something that we had been looking at and said, we got to get out of this thing that, that ended. So, um, we were, uh, um, had that opportunity to then go look around and say, Hey, are there other options here for us? And, you know, for me, there's no question that I, I think that the Gosstown high school is a pretty good high school, you know, but I, I do see the problems at the middle school. And I think that a lot of people in Dunbarton do look at that middle school as a problem. I mean, even Gosstown knows it's a problem. They've spent yeah. $35,000 you know, looking at it. There's, so there's a, that's a story that we've spent an awful lot of airtime. Right. Here. So, I mean, it's no secret there as to, you know, what one of the things is. And you get an opportunity to come up like this. Mm -hmm. You know, you, I think that you should look at your options. And that's what the, uh, the Dunbarton School Board has done. And they've done a great job at it. So it's basically the opportunity presented itself because of the, the pending termination or end date of the of, of exactly. the contract. Um, there has been a lot of discussion over comments made by Goffstown School Board Chairman Phil Pancoast and what the town of Dunbarton, he says, is going to be obligated to if it leaves, including ongoing payments, if I'm not mistaken, on the, on that rental charge of uh, $880,000. What, what's your take on that? And uh, uh, why do you uh, do, do you agree with him? And if so, no, of course we why? don't agree. <laughs> it's um, because it's a it's the end of agreement. Um, Phil Pankos wants to think that the he wants us to withdraw from this last agreement. And when you withdraw, it is a clear distinction. Something else happens. Right. And that is you pay for bond issues and stuff like that. Right. There's no way you can look at this agreement and say that we are withdrawing because you have to a have a withdrawal vote, which hasn't happened. And B there's an end date on the contract that says mm -hmm. it ends here and that's when it ends, just like your lease or whatever it would be. So it's a non-renewal effectively. Exactly. All right. Now, Steve, um, I, I don't know which one of you, um, if not all three of you, uh, are sort of helping to disseminate information. But we ran a story it's either earlier this week or late last week about the launch of your website. You folks have put together a rather comprehensive website to disseminate information um, what you believe are the pros and cons. I think you in that website hit Pancoast's uh, statements and criticisms head on. Um, how can people get more information uh, and, and learn more? Well, you know, a lot of people in town have dedicated a lot of hours to attending countless meetings in both Dunbarton and Bow throughout the whole last year and a half. And as a result of that, a whole lot of objective facts-based information has been compiled. And uh, because of that, uh, we felt that there was a need for people to know that information. And uh, as a result, a website has been created and you can go there and find it at www.dunbartonschoice.com. And there's also a Dunbarton Parent Group Facebook page, but uh, there's a wealth of information on the uh, dunbartonschoice.com website that I encourage any uh, voter that's considering to vote Go check out. And, All right. Thank hey, you. Rich, I just got a quick question for Dan. I couldn't help but notice the left arm and the cast. Have you been hanging out at Goffstown School Board meetings? <laughs> I know it yeah. gets pretty rough over there. I know. Well, they did They did try to haul out a report. Yeah, they sent – I. you listened to the show. You know what they did. <laughs> Told a reporter to move a camera or be arrested and removed because the chairman of the school board said so. But at least they didn't break his arm. Uh-huh. Gents, uh, in, the, in the closing seconds we have here, what's the takeaway? What do you want to leave the people listening to this interview with um, as they consider going to the polls on Tuesday in your town to vote for Glasstown or both? It's actually March 16th. Oh, okay. At 1 o'clock. That's when the meeting is. And, March 16th at 1 o'clock. Uh, and it's just, you know. Proven education in bow, lower costs, and that's what we're hoping for. Proven education, lower costs, and they say competition doesn't work in the educational marketplace. Clem Madden, Dan Ryan, and Steve Alexicus, thank you for joining us here on Gerard at Large. Thank you, Dan. We appreciate uh, we appreciate your time and bringing us up to speed on the issues in your town. Thanks for having us.